Excellencies, distinguished guests, the President of the Philippines. Thank you, Secretary Romulo, Chairman of the Special Non-Aligned Meeting, Non-Aligned Movement Meeting on uh, Interfaith Dialogue and Cooperation. President Trekki, welcome to the Philippines. When my godfather and the uncle of uh, Secretary Romulo, General Carlos Romulo, became the first president from Asia of the General Assembly, he said, I am the president of the world. So we welcome the president of the world to the Philippines today. <laughs> Mr. Sazuk, a Minister of Religious Affairs of uh, Egypt, the Republic of Egypt, and um, who is the chair of the Non-Aligned Movement, thank you for agreeing to have this conference, very important conference and very important conference for us. Thank you for agreeing to have it here in the Philippines. We're grateful for that. <laughs> Dr. Wendley, thank you also for the cooperation of all of those who have been working hard for interfaith dialogue. Thank you for being here with us as well today. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, to all of you as well, welcome to the Philippines. For more than 50 years, the non-aligned movement has been one of the most respected platforms for dialogue amongst the developing countries in the world. The non-aligned movement is made up of 118 member countries, the largest outside the United Nations organization itself. This organization, the NAM, prides itself as the intergovernmental grouping committed to promote and protect the principles of respect for cultural and religious diversity, tolerance, understanding, and dialogue. So it is but fitting that the NAM should sponsor an interfaith dialogue at the ministerial level for peace and development. We recognize that ours is a diverse world that is part of the principles of the NAM. And we recognize, though, that we are bound together by our common desire for peace and development. We in the Philippines are honored that our special non-aligned movement ministerial meeting on interfaith dialogue and cooperation for peace and development is being held in the Philippines and being chaired by our Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Secretary Romulo. We are proud to have this here because this is a country that bears living witness to the importance of intercultural and interfaith tolerance, understanding, respect, and dialogue for peace and development. We in the Philippines consider our intercultural and interfaith dialogue policy framework as an enduring basis for a coming together of the country's different cultures and faiths within a shared environment of peace, security, and development based on mutual understanding, trust, and respect. Interfaith dialogue is not a theory for us. For a long time now, it has been a reality among our diverse people and beliefs. Philippine society is a multi-ethnic one. Our policy framework calls for Philippine society to be founded on social justice for all and the institutionalized accommodation of ethnic traditions, Muslim and Christian, Chinese and Spanish mestizo, Tagalog and Cebuano. These are but a few of names to which the Filipino responds in a wondrous testimony to our rich and varied heritage as a nation. In the Philippines, I say that interfaith dialogue has been a reality for a long time, not just theory. Because for a long time now, for instance, the Bishops' Ulama Conference brings Catholic 
and Christian bishops and the members of the Mindanao Ulama League in constant dialogue and a common search for comprehensive development through the unifying aspiration for peace. The promotion of intercultural and interfaith dialogue and cooperation rooted in tolerance, mutual understanding, trust, and respect is also a primary strategy to achieve peace as well as a key element in the country's peace process. And this embodied in our country's medium-term development plan. Thus, interfaith dialogue is officially and in reality a major contributor to peace and stability in Mindanao. While lasting peace has yet to be achieved, we have taken heavy political risks to broker a peace in Mindanao. We have reached within the affected communities to change the peace paradigm, to change it into a combination of soft and hard power, not just a military solution, but a solution of dialogue, a solution of community development, a solution of talking peace. Through our steady promotion of interfaith dialogue and respect for the diverse cultures, traditions, and practices of the peoples of Mindanao, we have been able to build in Mindanao roads that open up remote areas into the mainstream of economic activities. We have been able to construct irrigation systems in farmlands that used to be impenetrable to construction companies because of conflict. And in all this, community development, dialogue, peace talks, we have brought together an international consensus to aid the process from the outside. Japan, Australia, the US, England, the OIC nations, Malaysia, so many others, Libya, have a vested interest now in peace in Mindanao. In the United Nations, the Philippines and Pakistan, with the full support of the non-member countries, have been actively pursuing the promotion of interfaith and intercultural dialogue, understanding, and cooperation for peace since 2004. The United Nations General Assembly, we are happy, has adopted by consensus our annual resolution on the promotion of interreligious and intercultural dialogue, understanding, and cooperation for peace. This is further proof that we are all united by our common humanity and our common quest for peace and prosperity. The Philippines is also honored that during the 60th anniversary of the United Nations, when the leaders of almost all the nations gathered together for a few days to conduct a series of summit meetings, one of the summit meetings was on interfaith dialogue attended by the heads of government and heads of states of countries from all over the UN member nations. And that was chaired by the Philippines. So we see this chairing of the Philippines as a natural consequence and a natural follow-up of that interfaith dialogue conference, that summit conference that we held in the United Nations itself during its 60th anniversary. Interfaith dialogue is a foundation that creates an improved awareness and understanding of our common values. With that improved awareness, the next step is real cooperation. And that is our expectation of the draft Manila Declaration that you will adopt, that it will contain an action plan of practical, action-oriented policies called from numerous local, regional, and multilateral interfaith and intercultural dialogues. Interfaith practical actions can focus on education, youth empowerment and development, and media to combat stereotypes and misperceptions. For after all, as we have heard our different speakers say, 
All great religions advocate love. All great religions hold life to be sacred. All great religions profess peace and promote understanding. Our challenge in promoting interfaith dialogue and cooperation is to redeem that true meaning of our respective faiths so that we can bring lasting peace and prosperity to the world. To all of you, mabuhay, and once again, welcome to the Philippines.